Hi, this is Natalie Kolbeck and I'm here today with Mark Leibowitz. I hope I say his name right. That's how I, as a German, would say it. And do it's, I do? It's, it's true. But <laughs> my family says Leibowitz. Oh, Leibowitz. There we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> so Mark is part of my book. He's a, an artist, a sketch artist, I would say, or watercolor artist too. He will tell us a little bit more about himself in a second. But I'm really, really happy to have him being part of my book. And I thought it would be super interesting to have a little chat with him and talk with him. Hi, Mark. Hi, Ned. <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, including me. I'm uh, very excited about your book. Uh, for me, uh, you know, coming into this as an urban sketcher uh, and all, I'm uh, fascinated by the uh, multimedia work uh, that you've done. And uh, reading your book has sort of exposed me to other techniques. So I'm, I'm, I'm an interested uh, participant uh, as well as uh, a collaborator, I guess. That's cool. So tell us a little bit for the people that don't know you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your artwork and what you do. Okay, um, I, uh, I'm on my second career. Uh, I um, spent uh, most of my adult life working uh, in the business world in a fairly serious job. I, and I, I guess I was working off of the advice that I got from my parents. Uh, they were very supportive of my artwork, but begged me uh, to not earn my living in that way because I would certainly starve to death. Uh, <laughs> And, you know, I, I, I've seen enough successful examples to realize that while their advice was well-intentioned, uh, I probably could have made a go of it. On the other hand, it, it has been a passion for me all of my life, and I never let go of it. I'd be in the middle of these very serious business phone calls, and my right hand would have a pen in it, and it, almost as if it had a, a mind of its own, it was busy doing sketches and you know the the borders and the margins of uh, all of my notes were were, were were filled with illustrations and other things. Uh, so now in my second uh, phase of life, uh, I'm devoted completely to art. Um, I'm lucky enough to have gotten a teaching position at Pratt uh, in their uh, continuing education uh, department. So these are motivated adults who are returning to the world. And I'm sort of leading them on the, the path that I've undertaken, which is uh, to become good at art and to be able to express myself in art. Uh, and I think my goal is you know, to be able to satisfactorily draw almost anything. And I think that that's a worthwhile goal. It's a challenging goal. Uh, like anything you know, that, 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 that's worthwhile, it, it's not easy and, um, the re results feel fantastic uh, and all. Um, does that answer the question? Uh, <laughs> <more? laughs> yeah, um, we actually knew each other a little bit before uh, Pratt. We both uh, teach at Pratt at the continuing education, with which I agree uh, with you. I, I enjoy it a lot, and I love uh, having adults that want to be creative and, um, you know, sometimes have no experience or little experience or a lot of experience, but let it, let it go for their, uh, business, uh, uh, stuff like serious business stuff, uh, sure. come back yeah. and, 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 and give it a go again. But, um, how I know you actually is that you are the founder of the New York city urban sketchers, right? Correct. Uh, I am the founder of New York City Urban Sketchers, but not Urban Sketchers. Uh, urban Sketchers is actually a worldwide phenomenon. It's we're actually celebrating our 10th anniversary this year. Um, we are in nearly 200 cities around the world. Almost every major city you could uh, name has a group like the New York City group. Um, the group that I founded, I. I I believe is the most active group in the world. Mm -hmm. We meet t twice a week, every week, uh, and we are doing this because we're passionate about the art and the sketching and enjoy being with a uh, group of like-minded people. There's absolutely no cost for this. Uh, and in addition to sketching together, there's also sort of a social component when we eat lunch and maybe afterward if we go out for a beer or some wine, there's we share drawings and talk about art supplies and 
uh, paper and inks and paint and everybody's got an opinion and it's <laughs> often the best conversations uh, of the entire week for me. Yeah, I totally enjoyed that. Um, I haven't actually, to be honest, joined you guys. I joined you for a class, but I haven't made it yet to the actually. Yeah, like, audience. how but come that is? Man? I know, I'm a horrible yeah. person. No, it's well, all my, no, it's no, all no, 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 you're a busy person. <laughs> I know. But what I really love about it is that you and some other people in the group are usually are like looking for a place that they know of or they are, they live around there or like something that isn't like the norm actually. And they say, hey, let's go here and here. This is why. This is what we could do. Here's where we could meet. And there's also this little cafe or place that I really like and we can have lunch at, right? So... Well, it's like I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a native New Yorker. I, I grew up in Brooklyn and uh, you know, lived uh, a lot of my life in uh, New York City. And uh, uh, we've been around, we've been in existence now for six years and meeting twice a week you know, for six years. We have been to hundreds of locations around the city and it's been a, just a real uh, education to visit places and then revisit them to see how they've changed. Uh, I, you know, we, we, we travel to all parts of uh, the city uh, to sketch, you know, things that are absolute um, icons, uh, you know, the sort of places you'd imagine, you know, the Empire State Building, the UN, things like that, but also really obscure places mm -hmm. that are, you know, quite interesting. I love that. It is actually kind of like what makes me think of the book, like it's an artful adventure. You you learn, ton, like I even learned tons just like getting those emails about New York City where I'm like, oh my God, I don't have time for that right now. But is there a way for someone who likes to sketch, uh, who's not in New York City or not part of your group, uh, who visits New York City to join you guys on one of those while they are on vacation or on a trip to the city? Well, uh, nice of you to say that. Uh, almost every week we have a visitor from out of town or out of country visiting with us. And um, these people are on you know trips to the U.S. It's vacation, it's work. Uh, and they make a point of looking us up, and that that's always a, a fantastic thing. Uh, we uh, welcome uh, visitors, uh, and uh, it, it, it's a great part of this. And in turn, when we travel, uh, you know, we we you know look up uh, urban sketchers in other cities. Yeah, that's cool. I love that. So besides going on all those New York City artful adventures, right? I have this question that I asked a lot of people, uh, a lot of the other artists that um, I interviewed for my book. So let's say you could go on any artful adventure, time, money, no obstacle. What would it be? How would it look like? Uh, huh. <laughs> uh, interesting question. Uh, and. I'll give you an answer, but in order to understand my answer, you, you, you'd really have to sort of, you know, understand the philosophy that I've got that, that kind of uh, is underneath it. If there were no objects to it, I'd probably pick the most expensive exotic vacation <laughs> that I could just so that I could do something that I probably wouldn't do otherwise. But the real answer underneath it is that that question really doesn't apply as far as my artwork is concerned. And here's the story that goes with it. Uh, I, um, in growing up in Brooklyn, one night I was walking with my younger brother. There's about a two year age difference between us. And maybe I was in the first year of college and maybe he was in high school at the time. And as we're walking, Alan advances the theory that anywhere on earth that you go, there is a beautiful picture to be found. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had artistic sensibilities, I had artistic sensibilities, he had opinions, I had opinions, and I very quickly said, that's nonsense. Uh, and he said, no, no, it, it, it's true. And, you know, the limitation is, you know, not the world's limitation, the limitation is your limitation. Exactly. Uh, you're limited because you're not seeing the beauty around you. And 
on the spur of the moment, I sort of challenged him and I said, okay, standing right here, find, find the beautiful shot. And we were on a nondescript residential block in, in Brooklyn. There was nothing that was catching my eye. You know, there were cars parked by the streets. There were some resident, residential things, some apartment houses, some stores. He focuses on the stores and notices that one of the stores is a butcher shop. Um, it's, you know, closed. It's nighttime. Uh, the street light is sort of illuminating and it says butcher shop, whatever the name of it, you know, is written right on the glass. And that's kind of reflected in this white tile and there's hooks that they would hang the meat. And as he's like eyeballing the thing, I realize he's, he's, he's zeroed in on, on the good picture. Then he starts doing, you know, one of these things, you know, <laughs> cropping the thing uh, and all. And he finally settles on something. He says, stand right, right, right where I am and take a look at this. And I looked at it, Nat, and it was a gorgeous picture. <laughs> and ever since that time, I have uh, said to myself that it really doesn't matter where you are. There's something worth sketching. There's something to stimulate the art spirit uh, of, of the artist anywhere you go. So, yeah, I would love to take an exotic trip with you and, and all of that. But the truth is, you know, that I, I really don't think that I need that to be inspired. I love this so much, um, especially since I've, to promote my book, I've run a challenge, which is almost done, uh, where I posted uh, for 30 days a word for every day and, and said, go out, it's called Stroll Through the Hood Challenge, go out and take a picture, for example, uh, triggered by the word home, light, or shadow, or whatever, every day there's something else, right? And in the beginning, people would like send me, some people sent me messages and they said, you know, I'm really living in a very boring place or I'm living in a village. There's nothing that, uh, it's a great challenge, but what I ca what can I do, right? Yeah. And yeah. so people are now like uploading during the challenge their pictures and they, their takes and um, there's a free classroom uh, that I have and, you know, people can share or with a hashtag on Instagram, they can share their pictures. And I, I love, like, it's like mini vacations and to see how people take the words and then, uh, you know, sometimes if there's nothing that's like right away there, they, they, they go like your brother, like, and, and, and like zone in on some things and like say, let me try to find something that could resemble uh, this part. Um, so, for example, I said loud, right? And I had a hard time actually to kind of like, how do you photograph loud? And then I found uh, at the Liberty State Park a ship and I, I took a photo of a ship horn. But then people would be like... Uh, colors that are loud that they saw somewhere or someone uh, uh, arranged like CDs in a real cool way and that was all music that she listened to when she was younger and she was like that's probably why I'm not hearing anymore you know like as a joke <laughs> of course but it was like it was so, I found it so inspiring and it's so true with what you just said there is a beautiful picture yeah. near you and anywhere in the world actually very cool I like that a lot mark <laughs> why thank you <laughs> so when you sketch um what are the like main elements that you want to sketch or you like look for like what what is like intriguing for you uh i know that in the book you actually chose or maybe I assigned it to you. I don't know anymore. It was people. Uh, so I got some really cool sketches of you uh, about people. So when you look at people, so what, what is like the essence you want to, what is it that you want to capture in your sketches? Yeah. Uh, I think left to my own devices, the thing that I enjoy, um, trying to capture the most it, it, our, our faces mm -hmm. uh, and you know, lots of reasons why you know the window to the soul and and, and all of that uh, and uh, you know you need a face to be attached to something so being able to draw a body helps uh, and then all of the problems that you know challenges let's say that come with that um, one time a number of years ago I was doing a drawing 
Uh, and it was, you know, one of these New York City model things where you can, you know, go in and do mm. life drawing. And the guy next to me said, beautiful drawing, but where is that subject? And I asked him, well, what do you mean? And I said, the, you know, the, the, the you know, the drawing seems to be floating in the air. Um, there was no chair, there was no wall, there was no corner, there was no brick or picture or anything to sort of, you know, give you a clue as to where the thing was. And at that point, I sort of decided that uh, I, I needed to draw things other than uh, people. Uh, and this is going back maybe nine years ago or so. Uh, and uh, I wanted to see drawings on the internet that uh, other people were doing. And the treasure trove, if you come to this problem like I did and want to see other people's drawings is urban sketching. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you Google urban sketchers, you can see hundreds of thousands of drawings uh, that people all over the world have created. Uh, and it was just such a, a, a dense trove of, uh, uh, of uh, work that I became like a, a regular visitor. Uh, and that sort of, you know, started me on on the path toward urban sketching uh, and capturing more complex scenes and backgrounds and homes and houses and trees and plants and gardens and vegetation and parked cars and whatever you've got. Um, that's the background. To answer the question, you know, the specific question you asked, when I go, I guess I'm looking for a composition that appeals to me. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've, you know, learned in doing the urban sketching is that it really helps if you bring a portable stool with you. Uh, it gives you the option of setting up and being in more places than you otherwise might. Um, so I often, you know, travel with a, you know, a collapsible stool that uh, I'll set up. I guess I'm also looking for the right mix of lights and darks. Mm -hmm. uh, if I want to include people, um, we need enough foot traffic so that there'll be people that I can draw from. Mm -hmm. And in truth, unless you've got a photographic memory, uh, if you want to draw from life, you're probably either going to be drawing ridiculously quickly uh, or you're going to be grabbing parts from mm -hmm. people. One person's face, another person's shoulders, uh, a dress here, a pair of shoes there, and you kind of assemble kind of a, a Frankenstein uh, person that kind of looks convincing. It looks like they were there, but it's not one individual. It's you know, the last 10 people that you saw uh, that passed. So I guess that that's, you know, essentially what I'm looking for when I go out. That's cool. Um, for you, for the book, unfortunately, they uh, shortened the book, so I had to take out some of the artwork that you guys Aww, sent in. I'm yeah. so sad. Bad people, bad people. No, I'm kidding. So <laughs> the one that made it um, was like not made it, I chose it then because I had to pick, was the one that you uh, sketched at Kramer's Pigment, uh, a beautiful store in New York City uh, where you can buy pigments. It's like a, it's like a candy store for artists. Uh, very really colorful. Is. But uh. they also do classes, right? They make, uh, they show you how to make your own watercolor and I think even like uh, gesso and all kinds of stuff. And so you did some sketches while you were taking a class so what i always wonder what i have a problem with sometimes when i sketch uh and basically i don't sketch people because i should practice it first but i also feel so intimidated by you know what do people think when i look at them so intense so how do you overcome this like weird maybe weird maybe it's not maybe you're so used to it you're sitting in a class and you're sketching you're doing something else or you're uh, sitting somewhere and you look at someone and they might notice that you're sketching. Is that like coming very free for you or how do you approach that or how do people react to that? Well, uh, I haven't forgotten what this is like. I've, I've overcome it, uh, but I haven't forgotten and I'm reminded because we constantly have new sketchers, you know, joining the group and I, I, I see what, uh, you know, they, they, they go through. You know, we bring a lot of baggage to creativity mm -hmm. uh, and it's an unfortunate thing. Um, you know, 
if we could recapture the innocence of childhood, it would make the artwork that we do a whole lot purer. Mm -hmm. I think also uh, in doing drawings, uh, everybody is mentally competing with the photograph that they could take. Um, and, you know, if we had 20 people uh, and uh, they all had an iPhone or an Android device or a camera and they all took a picture of something mm -hmm. uh, and we printed those pictures up and sort of dumped them on the floor and said, everybody, find the photograph you took. There's an excellent chance that there'd be a number of people that would be bewildered and would not be able to figure out, well, which picture of the Statue of Liberty, let's say, mm -hmm. is one that they took. Um, the the artistry, you know, that goes in that makes it a really individual, individualized thing, is often bled out, and that's not, you know, to take anything away from people that are really skilled at photography mm -hmm. uh, and all. And you know, there are certainly uh, iconic photographs where you instantly know, you know, who the photographer was uh, and all. Uh, but the sketch is not competing with the photograph. And would we to do that same experiment, 20 people drawing 20 things, throw the drawings down, find your own, everybody could find their right. own. And, and it, it's the quirky individuality that is really valuable. And, and in a world in which everybody has a camera, I think handmade objects like the, uh, you know, the multi media stuff that you do and the urban sketching that, that I do becomes more and more value, mm -hmm. valuable because it, it really is totally unique. Yeah, I think that's also like something, it's just beautiful to work with your hands and just do things and speaking of what you just said about a photograph, I often use this quote in my, uh, in my classes where I say, nothing screws us up more in life when the perfect picture in our head. Mm -hmm. We see mm -hmm. something or we have this idea of how something should look like yeah. and then we strive to do that in our, our own artwork and we're so hard on us and it's like, wow. uh, well, if, if we, need, we need to let go of that picture, right? And just yeah. like, uh, and well, the other thing is practicing, of course, too, so... <laughs> I, you know, I, I think everybody has, you know, a, a little bit of a fantasy, um, you know, a, a negative fantasy mm -hmm. about what could go wrong and how horrible the thing could be. And this business of drawing in public, I think the fantasy that people bring to this is that people are going to see them. Mm -hmm. They are going to come over. They are going to look at, you know, what I created they're going to realize that I'm a complete phony and a fraud and have absolutely no talent. And eventually there'll be a whole circle of them and they'll all be pointing and looking at me and whispering and laughing at me and I'll be humiliated so much so that I'll die right on the spot. I think that's, <laughs> the, you know, that's, that, that's the total fantasy of what could go wrong. With How this. often did that happen to you? Well, of course, it's never happened. Uh, the only the only people that notice are people that are interested in art. You know, if you notice that somebody's drawing and you really just don't care about art, you know, if your if your thing is whatever it is, you know, you, you're just you. It, it's not even going to register. But if you've got an interest, you're going to come over and look, and you're going to marvel at the courage of the person that's out there sketching. And they're going to wish basically that they, you know, were out there doing it with you. <laughs> you know, I, I think that in terms of inviting people to urban sketching, uh, our most likely candidate is anybody that stops by to, you know, to see what we're doing. They probably would like to be doing it. Uh, we were sketching in Washington Square Park. A guy came by. He was from Fort Worth, Texas. He's on a trip to New York City. He admired what we were doing, and I asked him, do you have a sketchbook on you? And he said, yeah, I do. Uh, and I said, do you have any drawings in it? And he said, no. And I said, well, why don't you sit down and draw with us? And he sat down and started drawing. How cool. Us. Yeah, really. You, there was another part of the question that you asked, which is, you know, if you can get over your own ridiculous and uncalled for fears, what about the person uh, that mm -hmm. you're drawing? 
Uh, there's a whole lot of situations. You know, if you're in a, in a park or something, probably nobody's going to even notice that you're doing it. If you're in public transportation, in a bus or a train or something like that, probably the best bet is not to draw the person directly opposite and to draw the person a little bit to the side of you. Um, in all my years of doing this, I've only had one incident. There was a woman on the subway I took her to be Jamaican. Uh, she was wearing bright, colorful um, uh, clothing. She had large, chunky jewelry. Uh, she had her hair done up in kind of a turban thing and sort of exotic looking uh, earrings. Everything about this woman was exotic and I just had to sketch her. Uh, and immediately with a lot of enthusiasm set to sketching her. And she looked at me and did this. <laughs> and I kind of went like that and said, okay, okay, yeah. no problem. And closed my book uh, and smiled at her and she smiled back at me. And that's the only time anybody has ever noticed. Uh, I've had other people notice come by and uh, one woman went and go dragged her friends over to see the drawing that I had done and announced to the entire subway car that, uh, you know, that, I, that I was drawing people. And then people wanted to be drawn. You know, whatever, you, whatever anybody's worst fear about this is, it, it's really unfounded. Uh, it, it just doesn't happen. The world is a much more positive place than we, we sometimes think. Yeah. I love that. That's a really cool uh, advice to in the public transportation. Actually, you're so right because uh, anything you learn when you move to this area here is that it's not as dangerous as you think it is, but it's also not a good idea to stare at someone right across from you in well, the yeah. subway. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you don't want to be offensive about right, this thing. Exactly. But on the other hand, and, you know, I'm speaking about the New York experience, which, which is really my experience, although I do the same thing when I travel. But urban sketchers all over the world report the same thing. There are sketchers, you know, in the Paris metro and in the Barcelona train system and just really all over and the Singapore train system that are busy sketching, you know, uh, you know, the way we do it here. Uh, and you know, not, not paying a, any crazy penalty for doing it. You know, it's a rewarding experience no matter where you try it. That's so cool. I love this. Um, so I'm going to put your your other paint um, sketches and the one in the book shortly into the video so that people get an idea of how your sketches look like. Um, but of course they should buy the book too. But anyway. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, not, not for my thing, but for the uh, multimedia, uh, you know, uh, information, which really is, is I, I can't say enough uh, about it. it. It's opened the door for me. This is a whole new way of uh, approaching the thing. I mean, I, th I think we're both sort of driving to the same destination, which is creative expression. And, and by the way, let, let, let me throw into you, and I, I think you and possibly anybody who you know, watches this video will be able to relate to this. So after doing sketching with a whole group, you know, we're in a bar or a restaurant, we're sitting around talking. And one time the conversation came up and somebody asked, why do we do this? Hmm. And, the, you know, the conversation went around and everybody contributed. And the consensus seemed to be, that we were not doing it for the end result, you know, mm -hmm. for the finished drawing, which is a nice byproduct. We're not doing it for the admiration of our friends and loved ones or total strangers, although if that happens, that's nice. The reason we're doing it is for the feeling that we get mm -hmm. while we're in the process of doing it. And there's a sort of a bliss or a harmony or a, some kind of a Zen piece, you know, the, the right word to express what goes on sort of escapes me, but it, it's a really tranquil feel. And it seems to me when I get back into it, it th th there's this, I get bothered by the day to day things, you know, that you've got to do, you know, to, you know, function in the real world, but there's this whole other place, mm -hmm. uh, this creative place, and I love returning to it. And I'd be willing to bet that you and everybody who does the multimedia and all sorts of art forms are really plugging into the same thing. 
Absolutely. You, you, you did say something, uh, and that's the connection between memory uh, and art. Uh, and, you know, I, I think back on vacations that I've taken where I've taken lots of photographs um, and vacations where I've, you know, done artwork. Uh, and I think the photography that I'm doing, and let me just limit it to myself. I think back on stories that I've heard about, you know, Ansel Adams, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the famous photographer who sort of captured the, uh, you know, the West and all of these incredible photographs that he took. And my sense was that he would travel to the place and he'd stay there and he'd observe the place for several days and he'd watch, you know, the place when the sun came up and watch it at noon and then see it when the sun set. And then he'd try to see it on cloudy days and stormy days and clear days and he'd make a decision and then he'd take his photograph. And I'd be willing to bet that coming back to it, you know, years later, uh, Ansel Adams was able to remember that very well. But that's not the kind of photographs I'm taking. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I compose the thing, you know, click and I'm on to the next thing. But when you sit and draw, uh, it's not, you know, compose and click. It is a very slow look. Uh, and it is, uh, it is observing in a way that we just don't do in normal life. You know, if I'm looking at somebody's face, I'm really looking at their face. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm examining, you know, every aspect of their face. And if it's a scene, uh, you know, I, I think in the end, the things that I've drawn, I remember with much, much greater clarity than I would otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good several, point. Do you have several sketchbooks, actually? Do you have one that you take? Or is it just an ongoing sketchbook and you uh, keep on going in one and then you finish it and you do the next? Or is there like, this is my urban one, this is my, you know? Yeah. Uh, huh. uh, no, I, I don't do them sequentially and, you know, continue with one book until it's done and then open up another. I have many, many books that are open. And it has to do with the size. Okay. Uh, I always have a sketchbook in my back pocket or in my, my jacket pocket, um, which is always with me. Um, and I'm generally sort of carrying a larger book, you know, where you can do more complex and more detailed things. But some of the paper is intended for, um, you know, quick sketches, pencils and pen and others, you know, will accept uh, a wet medium, watercolor and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Some are in landscape mode, others are in portrait mode. And I, I you know, it, it, it really depends. I, I'm, I'm trying to think if, if life would be better if I was as organized as you just described and went from one book to the next. I have the sense that friends of mine, people that, you know, I admire and all work in that manner, but I guess I don't. Me neither. I have several art journals at once. I've oh. worked on several paintings at once, so don't feel bad about it. Okay, Whatever good. works for us, right? <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, it was so wonderful talking with you. I, I yeah. found it very, very interesting. I could talk to you way longer, but um, I want to like. I would like to see if you want to add anything. Like, do you have any classes coming up you want to talk about? shows or something that's on your heart that you would like to talk about uh, to finish their uh, interview up? Well, I can think of two things that uh, might be worth sharing. Um, the uh, <laughs> I do teach at Pratt, uh, and it is a basic drawing course, and these are the fundamentals. Uh, and I think at any point in your career, going over the fundamentals is always a worthwhile. Um, I'm... Uh, we accept students with all ranges of, uh, of uh, skill. And if, if you sort of go through the thing, you improve. That's item number one. Um, and that's, uh, again, the School of Continuing Education. The second thing is that because urban sketching has a 10th anniversary, uh, urban sketchers worldwide is embarking on kind of an educational program uh, and it's uh, it's called the 10 by 10 program, 10 for our 10th anniversary, and the second 10 is for 10 workshops. And the New York City Urban Sketching Group is going to be hosting 10 different workshops 
taught by local people that have you know different skill sets uh, and uh, it's a way to sort of get in, improve on something that you're looking to improve on, uh, learn a skill set that you might not have, or just sort of get comfortable with the idea of uh, drawing in public. And we're going to be posting those uh, those workshops in the next week or so, and they're going to be continuing throughout the year. Uh, once it gets too cold to be outside, mm-hmm. we'll be hosting them indoors. And just from, it feels like this is going to be a success. And I think that this is going to become a permanent part of uh, what we're doing. There's really no instruction in urban sketching. We're all just getting together to do it. And this kind of scratches an itch that I think a lot of us have sensed is out there. So those are my two things. That's cool. That's I'm looking forward to it, and I hope I can join another workshop. You and, could. Yeah. And I also, if you guys are in the area here in New York or uh, New York City, you should definitely, uh, New Jersey, uh, check out Mark's classes at uh, Pratt. Uh, I think a lot of people have a little bit of fear that it's like, oh, it's Pratt, and what am I going to go there? But guys, this is the continuing education. It's open to any skill level, and it's like uh, most of the classes, or as you said, basic yours is a basic drawing class. Yeah. It's not that you have to be a master artist already to join this. So don't fear just because it's such a well-known institution uh, they're, they're, these classes are cool and they're so much fun and it's a really cool environment too. I enjoy teaching at uh, Pratt. So check out uh, Mark's class there if you're in the area. Uh, maybe maybe you're visiting New York and you just want to do it. You're on that day in that week there. Always a great idea to uh, do something like that. Or join the Urban Sketchers then you're there. Right? <laughs> so, All good suggestions. Right. Thank you so much, Mark. That was wonderful. And yeah, well, hope I see you soon in person again. I would love that, Natalie. Okay. Enjoy the weekend. You too. Bye now.